All right, so back in the day, uh, Disney owned Hollywood Pictures, and they also owned uh, Touchstone Pictures, and they all, they both acquired, and I'll put Ernest in there. They acquired Ernest, and they acquired uh, Polly Shore. So good for them before they got Disney. <laughs> All right, so real quick, Ernest was a guy who promoted milk uh, and dairy farming stuff. And so he was signed with Disney Touchstone for movies. He did four with Disney Touchstone. And then I don't know how many. I think uh, Polly Shore did uh, several uh, Disney movies with um, them. And one, the, the big breakout movie was Encino Man with uh, Brandon Fraser. So you get two breakouts there. You get Polly Shore and you also get uh, um, Brandon Fraser who play, And you see a little cameo by Brandon Fraser in this film. So it breaks out. And so that's in that kind of universe, and you get the son-in-law. Now, understand the character that Polly Shore supposedly plays, which is supposed to be a character, is the Weasel. The Weasel is a character from MTV. He always played, and so he was really popular in MTV. When I was a kid, and it was your age, wherever, we didn't have, like, cons to go to, right? So what we had was music festivals, and you'd have, like, uh, bands play, and you'd stay three days. Now, I'm not a hardcore music festival person because I don't do tents, okay, and I don't do mud, all right? So I do hotel rooms, and I show up early and then leave early as well and go to my hotel room because forget that camping stuff. That was back in the day. Now I, I like camping. Don't get me wrong. I like going out in southern Illinois and camping with everything. But you had music festivals and Polly Shore and would do them like the music festivals with MTV and got really, really popular. Now, who Polly Shore is? Well, he is the son of one of the most powerful comedian uh, organizers in the world who owns, uh, you know, she passed away, bless her heart, Mitzi Shore, who owned the L.A. Comedy Store, okay? So Polly was the offspring of Mitzi. And so Mitzi ran the L.A. Uh, comedy Store, which was like where Johnny Carson got all his comedians. So, you know, Roseanne Barr came from L.A. Comedy Store. David Letterman came from L.A. Comedy Store. Uh, David Chappelle, all these people have performed at L.A. Comedy Store. And so Polly was a young tyke and was in diapers when a lot of these comedians, like Richard Pryor, would be up there on stage doing his filthy comedy. But... Little Polly was there, and Polly grew up in that atmosphere. So Polly grew up and created a character called the Weasel, and then he performed the Weasel, and then it became very popular with the MTV generation. And so it was just like, okay, let's give him his movies. And, and so you get Encino Man, which is Brandon Fraser and him together com uh, combining uh, comedy talent, I guess you would say. And then you finally get, uh, of course, this movie called Son-in-Law. And I did like Son-in-Law. And uh, now watching it 30 years later, you know, I did find myself four or five times actually laughing. I laughed about four or five times. I uh, really got involved in the story and got kind of nostalgic for the going back to the home for the holidays thing. So this is my Thanksgiving film I give to you because, like, if you take Thanksgiving, everybody does plane trains and automobiles. And, you know, yeah, we understand Steve Martin, blah, blah, blah. And John Candy doesn't uh, have a home. And so Steve Martin takes him home with him. Okay, okay we know that. All right. This is another, a younger version, uh, younger people version of that and this is called son-in-law and like said yeah I, when i was younger i was kind of during this time i was wearing bell bottoms and i had like rope necklaces and i played a lot of music and i was getting in the industrial phase and that kind of thing now I, I like I said i go to music festivals and this is kind of what our generation was into and Polly Shore was uh, kind of really funny and then like you know this was more of your college age you know transitioning where you got this young girl from South Dakota who goes to college and you know then we kind of take a spin on guess who come in a dinner and so she brings Polly Shore to them and introduces them so that's where we get Polly Shore and who he is and that he's the son of uh, Mitzi like as well so uh let's begin is uh talking about the story of this film lucas uh what, what about the story of this film what do you mean what about it to start it off uh well what's the story it's 
<laughs> What's the lowdown, man? Basically, like you said, we have our main character, Rebecca, and Rebecca has just graduated college, and she is No, she's graduated from high school. And, high school, I and meant. she's going to college. She's graduating high school, and she's going to college in California, uh, and she's leaving her beloved boyfriend behind, and he's like really pushy about it and he's like don't go and she's like i'm gonna go to california and then she goes to california and meets this friend who's pretty wacky and off the wall and i guess he's supposed to be like stereotypically wacky californian like in that style that you were talking about the music festival kind of yeah You'd, you'd find that guy. Like I said, you're in L.A., you'd, you'd find that guy, and uh, sometimes he would hook you up, you know. One thing is, I relate to this character because, like, here's the difference between my generation during that time than my dad's generation. It's like, like, you hanged around with the opposite sex, like, in my generation was. And it's like, when my dad's generation was like, this is my girlfriend, whatever... No, we had girlfriends, <laughs> and it was like, there'd be the girls that you hang out with that like to skateboard or whatever and, and do stuff with you, and then there's a girl that you had an intimate relationship with, and you separate between the few, and like a lot of people like was older than me never understood that, that we could like hang out and not have like intimate relationships with uh, opposite sex, and that's like what Polly Shore is. That was like me, man. Like, there'd be the girls like I'd go take shopping with. I love you. You know, like, when you had a problem, you go shopping. And you get that out of your mind. Because, like, Mitzi, who was rich, or your parents had a lot of money, they gave you some money. Now, I worked for every dime I had. Like, I always had $400 in my pocket because I always hustled money when I was since I was 12 years old. So, uh, I'd go hustling. And I'd hang out with the girlfriends, you know. Like, you go to the mall or whatever. And that's like what Polly would do. And then, you know, of course, you, you might find that special one who you would intimate with. But that's kind of like this difference between the generation that I grew up versus my dad's generation. It wasn't like that. My dad's generation didn't go out with the girls. <laughs> it was like, I had my girlfriend and I went out with the boys. I was like, no, I'm going to hang out with the girls and then, like, <laughs> you know, whatever, let let things flow, you know. It's like, like you said, you know, that was kind of like the like way Polly Shore was in his character. I, and it's like, I relate to that mess because it's the way it was. It's like, first of all, there are more girls than there are boys. They outnumber you. And so to not say that you're not going to hang out with them is, like, really... I don't know, weird to me, and uh, I'm just comfortable around women. I always have been, and I feel like that's where Polly Shore is. He's very, you know, character. He's very comfortable around the females and that kind of thing and stuff like that. Of course, he'd always say something off the mark and get hit or slapped by a girl, but that's just part of it, you know. And uh, But, you know, he's just, he's just one of those guys. Like, yeah, like I said, you go to the festival scenes, you see guys like that and have a good time with but then again, but he's also like the maintenance supervisor, but they call it something else there at the college because he's got, he's been there six yeah, years. He's... That was funny. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, he was, I don't remember what they called it, but basically he was like the uh, peer in charge, I guess you would kind yeah, of describe super, it Super, I mean, I, I would say more like a super, like, you know, like I said, you, if you needed air filter changed out in your room, He'd be the guy you go to, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's like you, you know, like you go to those dorms, uh, those those little remote controlled um, ACs in the dorms, you know. And then you, I, I I just changed him out myself, but then there'd be people who are helpless, who's never been outside their home, who <laughs> always had to call someone. I need someone to clean out my filter, my AC, because <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Just I've heard some crazy <laughs> stories. I've heard, of, oh my gosh, I've heard a story about this girl who went away to college, okay, and she gets there and she unpacks and she asks her roommate, she's like, when does the maid get here? And she's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and this girl's like, when when did they come, you know, clean up around here? And they're like, what are you talking about? We clean up around here. Like, there's no maid. We don't get no maids. And this girl was like, couldn't like grasp that. That's like, you don't get maids. 
No, you don't get maids here. No. But the thing is, uh, and real quick, I'll, I'll establish a little bit about the family. The family is from, supposedly from uh, the South Dakota area. South Dakota. Yeah. Yeah, like a small town. Right. And her boyfriend is basically, oh, you froze there. Okay, there you go. Um, basically, her boyfriend's like the small town uh, college uh, quarterback type dude. You know, like, and she's supposed to be like the valedictorian, which, you know, always pretty forceful. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Yeah. It, but it, but know, he seemed, yeah, he seemed like he was popular and I guess he'd be charming. Everyone else in the town seemed to like him. So, yeah, he obviously had some kind of a reputation. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he got Tim, Timber, Amber Thiessen, whatever her name is. I call her the, basically the town flirt girl. I don't know. I don't want to use any derogatory terms to <laughs> but she was hung up on him obviously i guess he was yeah like, i thought i was real confused about the whole thing but yeah I guess it, it made well he, he had a smart girl fetish <laughs> he's a shitty person that's all i can say this guy sucked like bad <laughs> like okay travis what was that was that, yeah, was that his was name travis was his travis okay travis like Wow, I'm looking at the cast list, and it just says, it has everyone's last names, and it just goes, Travis. Like, you don't even get a name, bro. <laughs> so basically, but this is a typical Midwestern family, you know. Uh, mom, dad, chubby cheek boy, farmhand, and farmer dad, and farmer wife, and uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, we're set up as a Midwestern family. So Becca goes and to And a grandpa. Crawl. And a grandpa. I love grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa's my favorite. Grandpa's my favorite in this. And he, yeah, his, he is cool. His, uh, his character, Mason, also was the hungry man spokesman. So it was really funny when Polly Shore brings up a uh, sp- uh, hungry man in this. And if you guys are... Oh, really? Yeah, if you guys never had your own bachelor pad, you have no idea what a hungry man dinner is. And so screw you. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, like in the South, we have banquet, the banquet dinners, you know. Those those were the ones where you had the, I'm trying to think, the Salisbury steak with corn and whatever. So and if you like haven't... The riblet meals. Yeah, exactly. The riblet meals are really good. Yeah, there you go. I love them. <laughs> if you've never had a Hungry Man or banquet or ramen noodles... Or have a hot dog, then screw you. And I'm going to tell you right You're probably wondering when the maid's going to show up. <laughs> Let me... I always said, you know, girls ask me, so how do I pick out a guy? You know what I give my advice is? Like, you're oh. over his house. If he has hot dogs in the refrigerator, and he has ramen noodles, and that's it, he's a keeper. But if you go into his fridge, and he's got drinks like... Of galore, and then he's also got a gourmet dinner leftovers and all this kind of thing. Uh, that dude is is a player. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's somebody I won't come in over that house. This is not you. <laughs> and it could be Bryce for all we know, or Ted. <laughs> but the point is, he's not alone. <laughs> If he's a hot dog, ramen noodle guy, he needs a woman. That's all I can say. All right, so where are we at? All right, so she's gone to college, and things are changing, but things aren't working out. So what's Rebecca feeling? What's what's the breaking point for Rebecca? Say, um, you know, uh, we've established, of course, this is a Midwestern family, but well, I'm, I'm going to do a quick thing about the mother. Okay, the mother brings... The daughter there, and then she gets shocked about the college because there's like a dude. Yeah, and then they all go there as a family. I thought this was hilarious, okay? I was like, man, dude, if like my parents were involved in like my journey to Chicago to college, I can promise you it would have been fights the entire way just like this movie. It was hilarious. I was laughing so hard. So, yeah, they get there, and then everyone's obviously upset that it's co-ed, and like these Californians are not small town people, you know, and just, and then, oh my God, the funniest part was the roommate comes in and she's like, oh, this is my girlfriend. And then she's like, oh yeah, I'll see you guys later. And she's like, I'll see you next weekend. And they start kissing and I'm just like, yeah, my parents would have flipped out too. I can't even like. The funny thing is I love the little boy going, 
Can I have your camera, Dad? Your camera. Oh my god. I was like, this is, there's no way. Some of the lines in this movie, I was just like, there's no way. But yeah, I mean, that that, that was true because it was like, yeah, I mean, Midwestern family, just a strong, hardcore value family versus, you know, the L.A. But the thing is, there is a breaking point for Becca because Becca brings this horse and this horse is everything. Kind of symbolizes what's oh, left yeah. of her uh, life outside there. And so there's a breaking point for Becca and Becca becomes homesick, which is like the worst feeling in the world. I've been homesick once and I tell you, it is terrible when you really reach that breaking point of being homesick. And what's that breaking point for? Go over that breaking point with you. Well, she had a really close relationship with a grandfather, and a grandfather would like whittle uh, animal figures out of wood. And she had like a horse animal figure that she really liked, and she'd like kiss it and stuff. And like it broke because just a bunch of these people at these school were being careless with her stuff. And then she was like, I'm going to call home. Yeah. But somebody stops her. Dun dun dun! <laughs> the weasel. <laughs> the weasel, yeah. He's literally like, give me five minutes to convince you to stay. And then she's like, I don't belong here. And he said, well, how do you know you don't belong here if you've never left campus? And then we get this montage of them like running through the city and like cutting off her hair and buying new clothes and getting the tattoo and like. Yeah, so she's like peak California in now. Yeah, she's uh, learning <laughs> to adapt, and uh, and of course, like she's got somebody with her, and I think they're they're growing a relationship right now of getting to know each other, and it's it's it, it becomes a mutual relationship. And like you said, at this time, I I mean, it, nothing's like really extremely funny to me, but I do enjoy this relationship growing between these two people, and I, I really like it. I think it's pretty good writing. It's not too far off to how people grow into relationships, and I think that's the way life should be. You should grow into each other. You know, this whole bull crap is like, I saw him from across the room, and that was the one, and then, <laughs> and then it's such horse crap. That's not how it works, folks. <laughs> not I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I wouldn't know. All right, so so they grow into a relationship, and as friends, they're friends. They're good friends. So, uh, but on Thanksgiving, a holiday coming up, which is really the first holiday where you get to go back home. And Thanksgiving is a big part of my life. It's like when I was going home and to my parents during Thanksgiving, I was like, one thing I wanted, now my mom and dad were going over relatives at the time because they put on this big old Thanksgiving ado. And a lot of people did they do. They do. And I don't know how these people do it. There's people that are 60 or 70 years old that put on these big Thanksgiving to do with their big old houses and all these families. I mean, they entertain 20 to 100 people. How they do it, I don't know. But I was like, you know, I was coming home for Thanksgiving. I said, well, can you do a Thanksgiving thing? I was like, my mom did it. <laughs> I said, I would help you out. I'll do all the thing, whatever you do. And they did it. You know, like I, when I came in, there's balloons and everything. Aww. And everything. Welcome home, Sean, and all this kind of thing. So, you know, we had big Thanksgiving dinner and, and everything like that. Got to spend some time with my girlfriend at the time. And, you know, and it was it was great time you know that's the whole thing about coming home for thanksgiving and everything like that and of course my girlfriend found me, i had a tattoo and i dyed my hair blonde and i didn't want to marry her and no that's not how it works <laughs> i brought home a la stone hippie girl yeah right oh my gosh that was wild i couldn't believe that all right so uh but anyways she's uh, it's thanksgiving holidays and they've gone she's changed into adapting and so what happens on the thanksgiving holiday what does she find out about polly shore's character the weasel <laughs> what does she find out about him yeah during the holiday that he's not going he's going to be alone for things oh i'm sorry i thought you were farther ahead he wasn't going to. Uh, he wasn't going home for the holiday, so he was going to be staying at the dorm and just like eating this TV dinner by himself. Yeah. And she was like, 
come home with me. And, and, and he was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, it was so funny when he talks about his mom and dad. I almost think of Mitzi. Because the way he's yeah. saying, you know, they, they're supposed to go to Vegas and everything like that. He said, and, and I think of Mitzi, his mom, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. and he ha- may be going through this himself in real life. And uh, so it, it hit home with me there. And I can understand this because, like, especially you get a mom who's, like, going to, through three or four or five different husbands at a time. <laughs> Which, you know, you never know. It's like, you know, one minute she's with the plumber, next minute she's with the artist, she's one minute she's with the rock and roll singer, he goes back and forth. But anyways, um, you know, at the same time, being a career gal, too. But, um, so, you know, Eve Eve doesn't have a place, so she invites him to come, and it's like, a lot of people compared this to, like, uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and other films like that back in the 60s. And so this is a new generation of that kind of uh, bringing to, uh, you know, someone for Thanksgiving dinner. And so he gets to, you know, see what life is on the farm is like. And so, uh, but everybody is adjusting to her change, right? Yeah, everyone's shocked that she dyed her hair and, you know, everything because she was so used to being this small town girl and then she completely comes back and she's like completely changed. She looks completely different than whenever she left. Um, and one, th- one thing I thought was really funny at one point is whenever she saw her boyfriend, one of the first things he said to her was like, don't worry about your hair. It'll grow back. And it's like, she never said anything about... Oh, and... Uh, like, that's literally you saying that you don't like her hair. And, you know, the funny thing is, too, he... I don't think she heard him, because, like, if she heard him, oh, that would have been it. it, it the relationship would have been off then. You don't like my hair? Oh, gosh, you might as well. You might as well. And let me tell you, folks, if she does something for you and you do not accept the change... It's over. <laughs> I'll tell you a real quick story. Um, I, you know, my I had a girlfriend. She bought those fake nails, right? And mm-hmm. she, I liked them, and I thought they looked really good on her. She did a good job on that. And she thought, I'm gonna get the real deal. So she took, I mean, her entire week's income to pay for those because they're, you know, the real ones. And mm-hmm. so, you know, and I was all for it. <laughs> and so, you know, and her mom actually yelled at her for getting those nails and she didn't say anything. She just let her mom yell. Her mom goes, Sean buys you this and Sean buys you that. You don't do anything for him and you go out and buy nails for yourself. She didn't even argue with her mom. Guess who those nails were for? So, you know, it's like, y'all, she do something nice for y'all. Just you, you recognize it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Cause you're lucky that she gonna do anything for you. Like, but she bought them nails for me. She did not buy those nails for herself. And she knew because she was making her man happy. That's where when you're so happy with your man, when you're not arguing with your mom, you know you're in a good relationship. <laughs> Cause she wasn't even gonna argue with her. Okay. <laughs> She's like, she's just looking at me going. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to the story. <laughs> so recognize what she does for you. <laughs> but see, that's the whole reason why we know she's not in love with Travis. Because she didn't do that hair for him. She did that hair for herself. So things are changing for her. See how I just twisted that? So... Now, uh, her boyfriend, everybody's uh, adjusting to this, but also they're adjusting to him. Not even the son is really uh, not liking him, <laughs> which is a pretty easy going kid. Uh, the name of the son is, uh, was it Zach? Who's played by yeah, Patrick Yeah, I think Green. so. It was Zach. Yeah, yeah, and Zach is, um, 
I'm not even too crazy about him. So tell us a little bit about Zach there and who has the oh, room with Polly Shore's character, the weasel, or Crawl. By the way, the folks... The crawl. Yeah, and how did he get that name? So he's always got a home. <laughs> And folks, if you don't want to know what that means, is he was so drunk <laughs> that he had to crawl his way home. <laughs> they even brought it up later in the movie, and like the parents were like joking about him, being like, "Oh, that, that's where he gets his name." And I'm like, "Are you guys crazy? Like, go check on this man." <laughs> I'm sorry, I just. <laughs> So she brings him home. But see, this is the thing about a Midwestern family. They know that you are you bring people in. You invite, they're too nice to say, get the, you know, out of your house. Because mm -hmm. that's the Midwestern values that hospitality. hospitality and that kind of thing. I want to say Southern, but this is not Southern. This is Midwestern. It's a little bit different from Southern hospitality. Southern hospitality is ten times different. It's a little bit rougher than <laughs> Midwestern hospitality. <laughs> All right, so we've introduced Weasel to uh, Zach. Zach has to share a room. Let's talk about this now. Zach has to share a room with the Weasel Crawl. Let's say keep his name as Crawl because that's how he plays. The Weasel plays the Crawl in this. And uh, yeah. how did that go? Well, at first the brother like really didn't like him, yeah. but he ended up like being able to show him how to do some codes on computer, and then he like really started to like him and thought he was cool. So they kind of like buddied up kind of early in the film, honestly, earlier than I expected. You know, yeah, uh, he was the first person to start kind of coming around. Yeah. Oh, and that's is why this is going on. Travis is mm -hmm. proposing to. Rebecca. To Rebecca, yeah, in the barn. And she, like, stops him from proposing by being like, oh, oh, I'm just really lightheaded. I'm, I'm going to go lay down kind of thing. And she goes to crawl, and she's like, oh, my God, he's going to propose, and I don't want him to. Like, what are we going to do? What am I going to do? And he's like, don't, don't. Yeah, she was like, help me. And he was like, well, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. And she's like, it's not that simple. And then they're like, okay, well, it doesn't have any answers to resolve the situation. <laughs> and it's like, okay, whatever. Well, they end up going to dinner that night and being like, oh, it's going to be fine. And then Travis stands up in front of everyone and is like, I want everyone to be a part of this. I'm proposing to her now. Yeah. So he does. And then Re Rebecca's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. He's like stepping on Carl's foot and he doesn't know what to do. And he stands up and he's like, you are too late. Because she's already engaged to me. Here's your ring. And then... Which was, like, really wild, and I don't even... I don't even know. It was... I don't... Well, before we get to that, though, you have to remember, what's Crawl's answers to everything when she's panicking? You don't have to do anything you don't want to do? No. They go no. shopping. They go shopping? Right. They went to the little farm store, country store, and bought some... Bought, oh some, bought him new clothes? Bought some duds. And this is where we get our second bit of male nudity. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and that's... Folks, I don't think that's a body double. <laughs> either. No, I bet it's not. But they had to steam clean those pants afterwards, or those chaps afterwards. Um, <clears throat> but we actually introduced Tiffany... Theason's character second time here as like she's works at the store and mm -hmm. you know I think she works at the store don't quote me on that. no she works at the bar that's right she works at the bar so she's in the store and then you know she meets crawl and her so she works at the bar and so we get her back a character introduced there and then we go to the party where we find out where everybody thinks that crawl and Becca are going to get married, which really upsets the parents and everybody in the world. And then one of my favorite lines from Zach is, I wonder what their children are going to look like. Who's your daddy? 